the game. And for the folks from Florida, for Oak Ridge, no doubt it all starts with Antonio Blakeney. And so they need to feed it to him. Well, this, is my, this is my favorite part of the game is feeding the big man up under the basket. He has all the ability to go over both shoulders. Uh, he finishes. He makes his free throws. Everything you want, give him the basketball. Let's see what he can do tonight. And they want to take advantage of the experience they bring to the table and also speed over size. We mentioned not a team that has a lot of tall players. In fact, the only player above 6'6 six, six is Alex Owens at 6'8". So they want to get out quickly instead of being a team that tries to take advantage of size. We mentioned Antonio Blakeney, the 6'4", 185-pound senior guard. It's a unique story. He originally committed to Louisville. He has since decommitted. He's considering Kentucky, LSU, Missouri, Oregon, USC. A remarkable player, Antonio Blakeney. I'll tell you what, uh, when you're talking about 34 points a game yeah. uh, for his average, that means your low has been 20-something, your high is in the high 40s. He's been consistent. He's dynamic. If Nick Martino wants him, we should want to yeah. see him. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that you really uh, want to do with basketball. Fantastic Alex, overall player. Alex Owens, who other player to watch, 6'8", 240-pound senior power forward, ranked one of the top 100 prospects in the class by ESN, ESPN. He is a Providence commit headed to Providence College. Big, strong, athletic. All the stuff up under the basket you want. For the, uh, for the St. James Saints, if the other team's key is to feed Blakeney, for them, it's to try to contain Antonio Blakeney, as well as to try to play at their tempo instead of having to play at that up tempo that you see from Oak Ridge. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you can't contain him. Um, he's going to give up a bunch of shot attempts. Uh, that's just how he plays. He has the ability to continue to play. He does a lot of things offensively, but you have to stay in front of him and it make him take bad shots. And, and in a game like this, if you can get him to miss a bunch of shots and you can get out of transition and get yourself uh, going a little bit, that'll, that's the way you win basketball. You also have to focus on your transition defense, obviously, because they're going to be trying to running, be running throughout the game. You can't allow them to get cheap points the other way. Let's look at our players to watch now for the St. James States, and it starts with Justin Robinson, number five, the 6'2", 185-pound senior point guard. He is headed to Virginia Tech, shows them over offers from UNLV, George Washington, Illinois, and UMass. I'll tell you what, the only thing bad about this kid is that he's going to Virginia Tech as a UVA guy. <laughs> um, he moves the ball around. He understands basketball. He's at the same level as the Alani Moores that we just saw in our last game. Uh, he's just a little bit more of a scorer, and he's going to have to really score tonight because his matchup is going to be all over. No doubt about that. And another player to watch, Craig Lassen, the Swede, 6'8", 200-pound junior forward. He is an offer on the table from George Washington. A little bit of a do-it-all, maybe your typical European-style forward. Absolutely. Uh, he's a smorgasbord. He can shoot the outside jump shot. He rebounds. He can make the free throws. He, he can play a, a multitude of positions. But tonight, he's going to have to be on his game and be a key role player if they want to have a chance of beating this attitude. Let's hear from the head coach of the St. James Saints, Coach Dan Free. Down here on the sidelines of the head coach of St. James, Dan Preeton. Coach, first of all, your team coming off a game against Flint Hill last night. What did you see out of your squad in that game? Well, it was a tough conference game. They played up and down the court. Um, and I, I thought our guys did a real good job of not looking ahead to today and stayed focused. So uh, I'm hoping they can continue to keep that focus. You're a local guy coming over from Montrose and now over at St. James. How exciting is it for you to be in this competition here with all this local DMV talent? Uh, it's nice. I mean, this area is always jam-packed with talented players and teams. The coaching around here is very good, so it's nice to be able to participate in this type of event. The big name on the other side is Antonio Blakeney. He comes in, one of the top recruits in the country, over 30 points a game. What do you do to slow him down? Uh, we're just going to play as tough as we can against him, make every tough shot. You know, every, every shot's going to be tough for him, and we can't let any of the other guys beat us. Third game in four nights for you. Any concerns of fatigue? Well, uh, you know, our big guy broke his leg last week, um, so we're, we're kind of used to playing with a thin bench right now, so I, I think we'll be fine with that. Best of luck in the game. Thank you very much. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Dan. And here we see, you mentioned, you're, not, you, you're certainly not going to be Mr. Virginia Tech, but Buzz Williams, head coach of the Hokies, in attendance this evening to see his future player, Justin Robinson. I'll tell you what, uh, I've been a fan of his. He was a coach at Marquette, so we, let's talk about that. He's a fantastic guy. No doubt. No let's, let's head there, back down and hear from the Oak Ridge head coach, Alex Jackson. Down here on the sidelines with the head coach of Oak Ridge, Alex Jackson. And coach, first game out of the state of Florida for your squad so far this season. How excited are you guys for this competition? Oh, uh, we're very excited for it. You know, we uh, really like playing really good competition, and sometimes we'll go anywhere to play it. 
Antonio Blakeney's the guy that everybody's talking about for your squad. He comes in averaging over 30 points a game. A junior last year, now moving up to his senior season. What have you seen as the biggest improvements for him this year? Um, just his decision making. Um, he's, he's really doing good on the decision making, knowing when to score, when to pass, when to, when to take over games, when to let his teammates play. He's doing a real good job of that. What do you guys know about St. James? What's the game plan to attack him? Uh, not much. We're going to play fast and we're going to be physical. Best of luck in the game. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ben and Alex Jackson in his fifth season at Oak Ridge. His team off to a 7-2 start this season, including an 80-60 win at Colonial on Thursday. We get ready for Oak Ridge and St. James in the National High School Hoops Festival. We saw Buzz Williams. We've seen Larry Brown here today. We've seen coaches from any number of programs we continue to talk about what a tremendous event this has become and we get ready for another opportunity to see really really good players on the floor now i tell you what the thing about this particular game and when we start talking about talent and coaches is that the best players supposedly have already been committed to those other schools yeah but these are these teams have uh division one caliber talent around surrounding those guys because that's why they've been made to be good so it's not just a one-man show but i tell you what there's there's a dynamic score on his Oak Ridge basketball team. He puts the ball in the basket. Um, he's going to be tough to stop today. Yeah, it can be quite the show tonight. Yes. We should expect quite the show ahead. The other thing I want to point out, and not I don't mean this in an evil-sounding way, but kids change their minds all the time, right? Right. right. And, and whether that means you change your mind like Antonio Blakeney did after committing or even down the road. You play a couple seasons somewhere. It's not bad to show up and just remind these kids of who you are, even if you've, you've lost it out on the commitment. Even, Absolutely. Absolutely. Even if, you know, you're looking at Justin Robinson, he's already made this decision for Virginia Tech. It could be that at some point down the road, something changes, and he remembers that you still showed up to see him even after he had made the commitment. When you start doing those kind of things, um, because last year there was over 800 transfers in yeah. college basketball, yeah. so we know what that's all about nowadays. They get somewhere and they don't like it. Uh, but at the end of the day, when, and you're in this level, you're talking about two of the three of the best cards that's going to be playing tonight. And uh, I like to see it. Yeah, we have the best seat in the house, right? Yeah, no doubt about that. And we are underway in game number two of our quadruple header here on DMVStream.com. And right out of an opportunity for a quick eye right there as Justin Robinson attempted to find Omar Halib on the alley-oop there, unable to connect. It's going to go out, and it's going to stay here with St. James. St. James, white tops, white shorts, and the maroon. They're going right to left on your internet dial. You see Oak Ridge in the green tops green shorts and what appears to be gold trim they'll be moving left to right when they have the basketball yeah i see the fashion statement the oregon duck it fashion does statement have they really have yeah. Yeah, absolutely has absolutely an oregon look <laughs> robinson with the ball in his hands he's going to give it off to Howard. and st james tries to set up their offense and you see immediately we we said during the keys to the game they want this game to go at their pace and so far they've had the ball for 40 seconds they have to be happy about that pace they don't want to play the up and down game that Oak Ridge wants to be absolutely but you have to have which is your coaching staff you have to have a bunch of kids that are committed to the coach to committed to your system nice feed there Craig LaSense the big Swede gets St. James the first points of the game in early 2-0 lead and how quickly was that that Oak Ridge came the other way down the floor it's going to get a foul call and that ball's going to go right back to the Saints but you're seeing exactly what we expected St. James showing patience. A really nice run play out of the inbound look there to get the ball to a sense for the easy layup. And very quickly, Oak Ridge down the floor going towards the basket. It's uh, it's showtime. It's seven seconds or less. It's all of those things. They want to be going towards the rim in this game. You have to be committed to the way you want to play. You have to have a bunch of guys that understand that's how we're going to win. And right, there's Justin Robinson. We were promised to show and... <laughs> He doesn't uh, let us down on that drive as he finishes for his first points of the game. And it's 4 nothing already in favor of St. James. And Oak Ridge, I, I believe this is a new record, uh, 12 seconds they've had the ball. 12 seconds. <laughs> and they haven't attempted a shot yet. That's remarkable. There's a tough turnaround look. Let's see what the call is. The call's going to go against St. James. Uh, I mean... I know you want to push tempo. I know you want to get this thing going, but I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to take better shots. Yeah. I mean, that's about an ISO basketball against a really methodical team. Is, I mean, it's four zero. That can't be your best look you can get. Michael Devoe inbounding the ball. Interesting. They have the freshman point guard on the floor early on. It's a lot of responsibilities to trust. There's a very nice finish there from Malik Gandhi to get Oak Ridge on the board and nearly come away with the ball once again. Justin Robinson fighting for it, and it will indeed. Go back to Oak Ridge and 
headed right towards the basket as the freshman and loses it out of bounds. Fortunate for Oak Ridge, they're able to hold on to the ball. Uh, this pressure thing now, I mean, you, know, you, can, you can find ways to speed teams up. They're going to have to keep the ball out of Justin Roberts' hands. They want to get this thing going in the right direction as far as turnovers and transition baskets. You see the replay there of the basket for Malik Gandy. What we haven't seen yet is Antonio Blakeney get going. He takes the three there from the corner. And it's going to go the other way to St. James. The sense with an opportunity to try to run a, what for a second would have been a fast break. He gives it back to Justin Robinson straight on from the top of the key and a great finish there by Craig with sense. He now has four points on the night. He's got an offer from George Washington. He's trying to uh, get his name out there a little bit more, the junior forward from Sweden. Nothing He's like got a, four points. Nothing like a bunch of quiet tap-ins to give your team a lead. No doubt about that. Blakeney will kick it out. Three taken there and delivered. That was off the hand of number one, Nyquan Murray, the six-foot senior. He's committed to Florida State, but not to play basketball. He's committed to Florida State to play a wide receiver on Jimbo Fisher's football team. You see the replay right there of Nyquan Murray knocking down the three. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, I mean, they haven't lost a game in two years, so it doesn't <laughs> seem like a bad place to be committed to football. No doubt about that. Uh, six foot, you imagine he's more of a slot receiver than a big red zone target, but That's slot true. receiver. Once upon a time, I remember a basketball player that was a pretty good football player at Florida State as well. Hey, I mean, I'll tell you what, I played against that Charlie Ward that you're referring to, Heisman Trophy winning Charlie Ward, and uh, he wasn't the easiest guy to go in the basketball side of the floor either. Ended up having a very nice NBA career with the Knicks and a little bit with the Rockets as well. Three-pointer there for Justin Robinson. Not disappointing early on. He has five points. It's a 9-5 lead for St. James, and they get the ball right back here. See, this is the way they're going to win this basketball game, if they do win this game, is that they're going to keep this thing in a non-transition. Get there, Make sure that they make this team go off for 20 to 30 seconds. Move the ball around. Just take good shots. Whatever happens, happens after that. Justin Robinson drives again. He pulls up from just inside the lane. That ball is going to come back out. An opportunity on the drive this time, and drawing the foul is Omar Howard. The 6'4", 195-pound sophomore, scored 16 points in the win over Allegheny earlier this week. He's been averaging 9 points and 10 rebounds a game. And he's got an opportunity to get his first two of the game here at the free throw line. And plus, a lot of times when you look at an Oak Ridge basketball team, it's not that big. When you pressure, you're trying to hide stuff uh, from the coaching side of it. You don't want to let them throw the ball inside. You want to make sure they trap the ball and all those other things. And, and right now, they're not doing a very good job of offense. Uh, St. James is doing a fantastic job of cleaning the glass, keep getting extra looks, second chance opportunities. This is the recipe for an upset. You saw the replay there, Justin Robinson knocking down the three. Howard makes the first of the two free throws. And right now, it's 10-5 in favor of St. James. It's going to miss the second. It's going to be rebounded by Oak Ridge, and it will be a 10-5 game. As now, the Pioneers maybe a little bit more deliberate in their offense. You know, maybe you get to that point, you still want to be aggressive, and Blakeney driving. It looks like it looks like Oak Ridge is playing knockout. Everything is one-on-one -on -one here, swing through, isolation against pretty much the entire team of St. James. Uh, I don't like it, uh, but they've won games playing like this, so hopefully it starts working for them. Right now, it doesn't look like it. You see the replay there, Blakeney having his shot blocked. Part of this is the problem of having one truly dynamic scorer that as he finally gets on the board, Antonio Blake with a very nice play around the rim, that you end up perhaps sitting around and watching too much. He's, I mean, he's one of the more dynamic athletic guards that you're going to come across in the country. It's not just um, one dimension. I mean, he, he does everything. But at the end of the day, he has, to, he has to take better shots in order for this team to win games. Nice job done there by St. James of breaking the press, but it leads to a Justin Robinson air ball. A great job done to save the possession by Howard. He fights the rebound once again, but that foul is going to go the other way. It's going to go on Howard, and it's going to be Oak Ridge ball. Robinson has hit one from the outside. He's had a couple of looks from the top of the key that, you know, is one particularly good-looking shot. As my coach would always say, that's not really your recipe. Yeah, yeah. somebody else's recipe for us to win, but that's not really your part in the recipe. You need to keep doing what you're doing, which is penetrating, getting into the middle. I know he's trying to get better as a basketball player, and he has all the ability. But right now, I just want to step into it, maybe take a 15-footer. Those count, too. DeVoe gives it off to Blakeney, who's going to miss that pull-up jumper. Really nice footwork there by Howard, but he loses the ball in the process. It goes out and goes right back to the Pioneers. I mean, right now, if... If Robinson doesn't have the ball uh, at the game before, uh, St. James doesn't get good shot attempts. And uh, that's the transition situation that they need to finish on. Right, nice drive there by DeVoe and a great finish from the freshman point guard. He saw a little bit of space and just went right towards the rim. Excellent penetration. Now their shot selection is starting to look better. 
you know, you get into layups, a bunch of layups to get you right back in, especially if you're a pressure basketball and, team. And we've seen this up the last couple of field goals they've made where they've pressured a bit there, trying to force the issue. And once again, St. James able to break it. They get it to Robinson. Robinson will give it over to Howard at the top of the key. He's going to kick it out and a three ball look there for Jordan Bartlett that doesn't go down. Rebound comes out to Malik Gandy and trying to get going to Blakeney in transition. He's going to be called for the offensive foul. No basket there. Instead, it will be St. James ball leading 10-9 here with 3.02 to play in the first quarter. Uh, I'm not sure about the ticky tackness of that one. Yeah, but you didn't have to blow a whistle absolutely. there. Absolutely. And the thing, you didn't have to blow a defensive foul either. You see the replay on this. This is actually from the bucket before for Blakeney. No, that was the, the offensive foul. My apologies. Another opportunity for Bartlett going towards the rim, and he's going to finish on this one, the 5'9 junior point guard. He's got history with Dan Preet, not only playing with him here at St. James, but he actually came to St. James from Montrose Christian when Dan Preet left Montrose to come here to St. James. We, of course, saw Montrose in our previous game. So everybody, it's like an old family reunion, perhaps, today at DeMatha. That three hey. comes up short. Nothing like a family reunion, little food, little chicken. Yeah, right, absolutely. Nice. It's corn on the cob. <laughs> Nice tap in there from Justin Robinson, showing the depth of his game. We've seen him hit some shots from outside, but does a nice job there of working in to get the tap in and extend the St. James lead to 14-9. Finding those, uh, those, those miscellaneous points and tap ins and free throws and those kind of things, which wins you basketball games. Seven points now for Justin Robinson early on in this one. He's been averaging 22 points per game thus far this season. You see Blakeney, he's going to kick it out. Plenty of attention given to Blakeney, understandably so. They don't want to let the man who scores 34 points a game be the one that beats them tonight. Foul call there, and it appears that St. James has Oak Ridge a bit flustered oh, early on in this one. Keeping them out of the middle of the lane. Uh, that's the best way to play them. Uh, make them take a bunch of contested three-pointers. Uh, at some point in time, he's going to have to go from the top. Every, everything he's doing right now is from the top of the key, which is, the you know, it's really hard to get to penetration from there. He's going to take one of these wings and get into the middle of the lane. You saw the replay there of Justin Robinson on the finish on the previous bucket that did make that lead 14-9. Once again, St. James coming up and deliberate and setting up their offense. They made it very clear they don't want to play Oak Ridge style basketball so far. Mission accomplished. It's still very early on in this one, but they have absolutely taking their time on their offensive sets, been willing to work the clock, kept it low scoring so far. They've got to be pleased, and they got to be pleased with Mitch Wilson pulling up. Two-sport athlete, he also plays baseball, but this was one of the things that you saw in the keys of the game. Billion St. Jacques with the outlet there and finishes off the layup. No transition defense, and that's an easy bucket for Oak Ridge. Right, we didn't get a chance to even praise him for the step-back jump shot. He right. already gave him a layup on the other end. No that, doubt, as you see on the replay. That's the ball movement, and that's the ability to transition up and down the floor that you have to be thinking about. 16-11 now in favor of St. James. About a minute to play here in the first quarter. Game number two of our quadruple header here on DMVStream.com live for the National High School Hoops Festival. Pull-up three there taken by Mitch Wilson. Feeling pretty good after his previous pull-up jumper. That one doesn't go down for him. He had a good look, though. I mean, that wasn't a bad shot. Now Oak Ridge with the ball, and DeVoe is going to drive once again, and he's going to put up a floater, and it's going to fall for him. DeVoe, the freshman with four points thus far. It's now a three-point game, 16-13 in favor of St. James. Even though it didn't go in, you have to make Oak Ridge move their feet defensively, make them go from one side of the floor to the other side, yeah. and then we'll see what happens. But right now, uh, they're giving up dribble penetration, St. James is, and uh, that's, going to be, that's going to be a big problem. Any quick shots on one end, so he's going to one end. See, those are the kind of shots that you want to call timeout about. You, know, <laughs> you don't want to put these guys in the transition at all. But a good job done there by Howard after a bad shot to track down that rebound and get it going the other way. 12 seconds to play in the first quarter. Justin Robinson going to hold on for the final possession of the quarter for St. James. He brings it in with about six seconds to play, looking to go to the rim. See Antonio Blakely put his arms up, asking where the foul is. No foul coming. And instead, Justin Robinson finishes the first quarter with nine points and it's an 18-13 lead for St. James after quarter number one. Yeah, I, I think it's a great no call. That's a great move by Justin Robinson. Got his both feet in the lane, pull up jump shot, get, put some, put some, keeps the momentum on their side for the start of second quarter. Let's head down to the sidelines. Ben Gordon, Goldstein standing by. 
guys, the big name over on the Oak Ridge side is Antonio Blakely, a top 20 recruit in just about every list for the class of 2015. Interesting storyline behind him is that he originally committed to Louisville in the first week of September, but then just a couple of weeks later decided to reopen his recruitment and decommit from Louisville. Right now he's considering a couple of different schools, Oregon, LSU, Kentucky, and Missouri are among them, but right now no commitment from Blakeney. Thank you very much, Ben. 18-13 here as we get ready for the second quarter. So far, it's been the Justin Robinson show, Junior. But that's exactly the kind of show you wanted to say, James. You got the ball in your best man's hands. He's giving everybody an opportunity to get a shot up. He's Hello, and thank you for viewing this portion of our most recent broadcast. This concludes the free viewing experience for this broadcast. Now, if you're interested in viewing the remainder of this broadcast, well, you can simply click the Add to Cart button located directly below this video where it says Download a Copy. You can also purchase a DVD copy of this broadcast. That DVD will be viewable on both computers and televisions. Now, for those of you that don't know, DMVStream.com is an independently funded project, meaning that your purchases and pledge of support go a long way in helping us to continue to broadcast live sporting events in the DMV. Thanks for stopping by and for your continued support.